Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk. 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 Great time for the phone to ring. Oh, <laughs> anyway, e e it's big moment. If you have a question for George or I on Home Voiceover Studios, put it in the chat room. And Jeff Holman, who's sitting there right now, still talking oh. tech talk, is going to write it down and give it to us. And in the next half hour, we will get to your question. Great opportunity for you oh. right now. Anyway, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, so don't go away. It's time for that right now. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by... VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hi there. Guess what? I'm Dan Leonard. Hey, and I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. B-S. Tech Talk. Hey, bro, what are you doing? Tech, tech Talk. 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 <laughs> That's Jeff Holman, by the way, who's sitting in our chat room and getting all of your questions to us just to make sure that <laughs> it's all complete. Dan, I like the big head shot. Let's, let's switch let's, to the big head. You mean, the, you mean, uh, you mean this one? Talk. Yeah, yeah. Let's, do, let's go big head tonight. Okay. Because we'll we have big heads. We, well, we'll try this for a little bit. About tech. That's right. Because the big head's about tech. <laughs> now, now it's too distracting. <laughs> Is it too much? <laughs> it's just too much. It's just too much. Just too much. Okay. We'll just go back to that view. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, what is it that George and I do? We do home voiceover studio tech. You want to talk about a niche. Yeah, there's a bunch of other people out there saying, yeah, I do this, and yeah, I can help you with it. I can generally count on less than two hands the people that actually know what they're talking about. I won't mention any names, and I certainly won't mention the names of the people who we think I have no idea what on earth they're talking about. Just remember that most people are experts in one studio, their own, and what works for them may not necessarily work for you in the environment in which you are working. And what George and I do is we help you understand all of the important things that have to go on in your home studio and we will physically if you ha we happen to be close by i mean we do house calls here in la george you go all over the place you know when you're traveling you offer the opportunity for people to have you come over and, and work on their I studios do. yeah actually next week or actually as you're watching this uh in replay i'm heading to boise idaho of all so places if you if you happen to be in boise idaho and you'd really like me to come by uh you know you know where to find me Oh, Boise. All right. Uh, and so if you want to work with one of us, because clearly if you've been watching the show, you know what we're talking. You know, we know what we're talking about. Uh, you can work with either one of us. Like, for instance, if you want to work with George, you, where do you go? You go over to? There it is. George the dot tech. Wait, it's that and, one. I'm go to slash VOBS because that's where you get our special deals. Oh, okay. Yeah. But never nothing wrong with that. But uh, yeah, George the dot tech is the site, and we are a growing in terms of our content and our service offerings and our team. Uh, there are there are a growing number of team members. We have a lot <laughs> Keeps of different getting people. bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, and and we've got uh, the the nine one one tech support service, which I'll tell you, fortunately for the last month, it's been pretty quiet. There's really been very, very few emergency tech calls coming in, which it it's a good thing. We don't want to see emergencies, but if you do, you can call us 424-226-8528 and press option 9, and you will actually reach live dispatch uh, dispatchers who will get you to one of our emergency on-call tech team. So pretty amazing stuff at over at George the dot tech. Dan, 
What you doing over there at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com? Uh, well, I tell people the reality of a home voiceover studio. It's not like it's something with lots of dials and buttons and a mixer and and nice furniture and guitars hanging on the wall. And it also home. isn't a gamer's headset. No, no, it is not. And although I've seen it, there are some good headsets, but they, they, you can't afford them. Uh, there's, uh, it's it's important to get your your setup done right. I will teach you about acoustics and proper microphone technique, and why I always sound fabulous even if I have a cold. Uh, and and you can sound that way too if you use your microphone right and setting levels. No one seems to understand that stuff. If you want to learn how to do it right. Uh, if you're here in the Los Angeles area, I do house calls, and I just love going into people's homes and ripping out all the wires and making things a lot simpler for them. And they're like, geez, it sounds so much better. How'd you do that? I got rid of all the stuff that you had plugged in and 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 stuff. It's not about the technology. It really is all physical. Uh, the technology is kind of secondary. You don't want crappy technology, uh, but you certainly do want to have stuff that is going to work properly, and we know exactly what will work properly in your particular environment without all of those equations that acoustisticians use it's like sounds good to me you know and generally if you send in a, a sample to me at my uh specimen collection cup you know it's like i want some silence i want you to read some copy and i want you to have more open mic silence and i will listen and within five seconds at the at the at the, the, the least I will know what's going on in your studio. You know, I can see the background noise. I can hear what mm -hmm. the reverberation is. You do this a couple thousand times, you actually get to know what you're doing. So uh, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, you'll get your home studio put together right. Look, you're looking at the two top guys in the business here. That's why we do this. We give you lots of free information, but we really would like, if you really need some help specifically with your home studio, you can't do better than either of us. Well, I, I know you'll do great with George. What happens with me is you'll have a great time because I end up talking about the voiceover business with people. You probably Ask get a it. lot more than you bargained for with Dan. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> most likely. As a voice actor, I, there's, yep. there's an awful lot I know uh, about the industry. The and, ins uh, and outs. It's, uh, and I have a great time talking with people. Anyway, it's time for George's tech update. We got lots of stuff. What do you got for us this week? Well, as timing should have it, this never happens on the show, but Apple decided it was time to have their scary fast uh, <laughs> release, uh, to, which should, normally they do their big press releases launching a brand new Mac in the fall. That's nothing new. Um, this time they squeezed, they squeaked it in. They decided not to do it on Halloween, but do it the night before, call it scary fast. And launch uh, a few big, well, I don't know, big announcements, maybe, just faster computers. The, the computers are exactly the same in terms of performance. Um, let's take a look at what you're going to see. Um, the, this is from The Verge, by the way. The Verge does great uh, they do great reporting on their live events. There's an M3 chip now? It's the M3 chip. That's right. So all oh. the you're not going to see it in the MacBook Air yet. But strangely, you will see it in the iMac. Yes, they released a new iMac. New meaning exactly the same as the other iMac that was already out, just with a faster chip. So if you've been thinking about buying an iMac, now is probably the time to get the iMac. Now... Who's an iMac for? I, I, it's not my first choice for a home studio. I'm always going to go these days to a Mac Mini uh, for a home studio. Um, I just like that you can get any size monitor you want. You're not stuck with a specific size. Um, but if you like an extremely minimalistic looking setup, well, look at those pictures of the iMac. You can't get more minimal than that. That is an extremely clean looking little computer and i've set up a few in some home studios and they they work fine they don't make any noise and they're plenty fast i mean listen guys anything with the m1 or higher chip is a light year ahead of anything made before it from from apple it really is true so it doesn't matter what you get just <laughs> they're faster now than they were m3 confusingly is double the speed of an m1 if you're looking trying to compare apples to apples see what Yikes, it is there. in apple 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, it, it is definitely faster. Will you notice it? I guess if you already have an M1 and you use it all the time, you might notice it. If you're coming from an older machine, they're all faster. So you're not gonna you're not gonna notice uh, crazy how how much crazier fast it is. Um, and then the MacBook Pro is released as well with the newest M3 chips going up to the M3 Max. You'll notice that you can for the mega power users who are ready to spend seven thousand one hundred dollars on a new macbook pro holy crap <laughs> you can get 128 gigabytes of memory or ram in your <laughs> macbook pro and eight terabytes of storage so that is one monster computer in a portable computer it's and it supports up to four external screens <laughs> And it's 16 core or up to 40 core. I mean, remember yeah. it was like two cores was really cool. It's insane. <laughs> it's clearly for video professionals and photography professionals. It does have a memory card slot in it again. So yes, and you don't have to carry another freaking adapter when you want to dump your cards to your computer. <laughs> um, but it, it is a it is an absolute uh, beast. But the, even the base base model, the M3 MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, it starts at six, uh, fifteen ninety nine. So, um, you know, it's a reasonable price point. A lot of people buying a new computer for work have no problem spending two thousand plus. So, sixteen hundred for an M MacBook Pro sixteen no fourteen inch. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. I, if I hadn't just invested in the twenty, what is it, the thirteen inch MacBook Air M two. I uh, would have considered this one, but I'm fine. I'm cool with Matt. So that's the new things from from Apple. Uh, you know, I I'm not going to go buy a brand new Mac day and date when it comes out. I don't care how many generations in. I just don't think it's a good idea to have not only the new Mac. That's not even what I'm worried about. It's the new OS. If you get a brand new Apple computer that comes out, then they they start shipping November seventh. It's going to have Sonoma on it. You can guarantee it. That is the newest 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 os and it's just it's still not quite we're not quite ready folks give us give everybody some time to to get used to the new version find all its quirks and features and the developers can find all the quirks and let the everybody else deal with that before you put that into your production computer if you have two computers Put it on the one you don't rely on to make a living with, if you really want to try it out. Which is what I did with my MacBook Air. I'm like, I got to try this. Totally seamless. Seamless, it was, yeah. It was, like if, if you don't use a lot of hardware and devices, and you just really use it as a laptop with mostly web browser stuff and Apple software and stuff, you're probably fine. You're probably fine. It's no. it's always the, the things, the, the surprises always come with hardware and like, Hardware drivers and like plugins, you know, that's where things will sneak up on you. So, um, in a totally different area, um, just a little update from Centrance. I've been getting, you know, the occasional email or comment. Hey, what's going on with that audio interface that you helped kind of invent? Whose name I can't remember. Nobody seems to be able to remember the name of this thing. Uh, the Passport VO. Uh, well, I, I did get an update from Michael, and I did encourage him to uh, release this to the investors who have purchased pre-purchased theirs. But he said, essentially, the good news is the prototyping machine is finally working and has assembled two of the chip board of the boards so far. The boards are the you know, circuit board inside the product, so they have their own in-house chip bot that will make the circuit board. And so he said, you know, that means we won't need to rely on China so much. I don't know if that means they won't make any in China or if that's just for the prototype. Not sure on that one, but that's what I've got from them so far. Um, they've pretty much, they've drawn up all the analog schematics for the product. The last thing, the last X factor is the USB chip for the product. He said, I asked a friend who lives in Taiwan to go down to see the manufacturer and we're still waiting to hear the results of the evaluation so <laughs> there you go tmi but you know this is what it takes to get a new product to market when certain things like you pardon me like your usb chip just vanishes into thin air and you have to find a new chip and redesign the board and make it all over again so that's what's up with ps the passport vo all right now i've got a little quick i'm going to take a snippet from a 14 minute video 
show you what I think may be one of the more <laughs> interesting parts than some of you. This is going to feel like watching this old house for a few minutes. Uh, this is uh, the, a little clip from the factory tour that I took uh, vocalbooth.com when I was up there a few weeks ago. And this is the segment, segment where we start looking at the doors and how the doors are made. So let's take a look at this. We're building those doors. Pretty serious piece of machinery. Mill. All right. This is the, the infamous door machine. Nate's going to demonstrate it for us. So he's rattering out the little tabs, you know, the little uh, plate where the plates go for the hinges. Does that first. And you gotta have three of those. You gotta have three, and if the door is big enough, it might have four. And as you can see, this is a solid core door. Is it made out of oak, or what did they say it was made out of? Actually, I didn't ask them what materials they make the doors out of, you know? I don't, I don't know. They get the door blanks sent to them, right? They don't make the door blanks in-house. That's done somewhere else. But this huge machine, which was the first thing I'd really noticed when I walked into the facility, this and the plasma cutter, which they also have, this thing is cutting where the doorknob goes. It's got a Forstner bit thing that pokes through and just cuts that hole. That's all it does. And then on the bottom, there's another one punching the hole for the plunger. You know, and it, that's all that thing does. It does one job. Hmm. And then he goes on and he cuts the rest of the hinge plates. This is real time. This is, it takes about three minutes to cut and mill all the different parts of the door. And... This huge machine, they only have it because the door supplier that they were using for their doors closed their doors. <laughs> <laughs> and Calvin, the owner, I have another video, by the way, interviewing Calvin. You guys can check out on the George the Tech YouTube channel. He said, hey, can we buy that machine from you guys? And they did. So they have this very, very large machine that's just for precision milling all the parts of a door. Um, which I thought was obviously really fascinating and pre impressive piece of machinery. Yeah. And the door is probably, when it comes to a vocal booth, probably one of the most important pieces of any particular, uh, uh, you know, soundproof booth. Because without the, uh, without a solid core door and the right, uh, fittings and it fitting just right. Yeah. It, it oh, can here's the another, another router underneath. So it's an upside down router. It's cutting the strike plate area oh i'm so glad you know the actual technical nerves there's the strike and the strike plate having done a lot of videos on how to install doors so <laughs> yeah uh, there yeah so there there that's done yeah that's the strike plate, strike plate. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then he drills the uh, holes i love air drills man they're so fast Sounds like the Indy 500. I know, exactly. <laughs> this is, this air drills are the coolest. Taken an hour or two? Annually? Like, probably. Maybe even longer than that. Yeah. I've actually worked for a couple of different door companies. Oh, yeah? Different, different, uh, different ways to do it. Always been the hardest thing to get right. Yeah. Yeah. Done pretty good. I don't. I don't have too many problems. Yeah. I would hope not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> nothing's little... more fun than trying to hang a door. <laughs> well, I mean, I, Calvin made a good point as well. Um, he said, you know, listen, not, it's not. It's one thing to have this big, heavy door, 
that's one thing. It's another thing to hang a big heavy door off of a thing that you assembled at home and have it, you know, the, the weight of that door when it swings wide open, that thing's pulling on the structure, you know, all that force is pulling on the thing. It, it's essentially a flimsy door frame is what it is because you're just screwing. It's not framed and hung and mounted to the house. So it's even trickier to get those things, uh, to get those things dialed in, right? So yeah, I was, I was really impressed by that. Really, really, really cool seeing that stuff being done in person. All, All right, right, well, that's it for my tech update. And Dan, we're talking about the cloud, the theory of the cloud. No, yeah. it's the theory of the cloud panel. panel. Now, this is, and it's not even a theory. I mean, I, I call it a theory, but in working with a lot of people and, you know, and, and, and how many of you are in a closet uh, deliberately? Uh, and if you're, you're in there, Closets can be very different. I mean, they, the, every closet is different. I mean, there's a standard closet. There's an, a 12-inch or an 18-inch deep closet with a sliding door. And then there's a walk-in closet. You open a door and all your clothes are in there and stuff. And the ceiling is generally pretty high. Or if you're in a smaller closet, it's built into a wall that has a higher ceiling. And that ceiling is sort of like that big hole in a guitar. Uh, it creates a big acoustical space above you that is going to create bass reflex like you wouldn't believe. And it's going to sound like you're down the hallway or something along those lines. So one of the things that uh, the, the George and I have been doing with people is we've been creating what we call clouds. And mm -hmm. what is a cloud? Well, if I, if I use my camera here and I can actually go up and show you what a cloud looks like. Hey, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool that I can do all that? Yeah. That, that is what clouds look like. They are, they are panels that are made out of wood. Uh, they can be fiberglass or rock soul filled. And, and then I usually put like a, a backing of weed block behind it to keep the fiberglass of the rock soul yeah. installed. And uh, see, it goes right back to where it's supposed to. <laughs> um, and uh, what a cloud does is, you know, it's like a regular sound panel that mm -hmm. will absorb sound and not let it reflect back to your microphone. But here's the theory about this that I, I find fascinating. Mm. That is, if, if, you, if you're in your booth and, and you go up and down, like, you know, try and go down on your knees or, and, or stand up really straight you will find that as your, your, your mouth goes higher or lower inside that space, it will change the dynamic of, of the room. You know? And if it's a very small room, it's going to really affect the sound. It's going to become very, very hollow sounding. So by hanging a cloud, you're doing a couple of things. One, you're reducing the, the upper area of the, uh, of, of the closet or the room you're in so it's not... It's not going up into that chamber and reflecting all over the place and then right. coming back down. But here's the cool thing, because I was, as I was just describing, going up and down and listening in your own ears how the sound changes depending on where in the particular booth you are. I came up with this idea that I was proven to be 1,000% correct because it just made sense. And that is when you're hanging a cloud... Make it adjustable. Maybe put it on a pulley. Maybe have, you know, having been a sailor and knowing an awful lot about pulleys and all that stuff, uh, you can make something that is totally adjustable. So what we're trying to do is we want to create a sweet spot in your, in your booth that will work every time. And if you're, you know, if you're standing or sitting, you can adjust that cloud to maintain a consistent sound within your booth. Uh, and I, I know some booth manufacturers and we've talked to them and they're like, I'm like, why don't you put a cloud in here and make it adjustable? And they're like, eh, we, we don't want to do that. Well, that's their problem because it works great in a closet. I just installed one, uh, in somebody's closet the other day and it sounds sweet. And before I put it in, it sounded pretty sour. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. very, very reverberant and it was, uh, the thing is, is it has to be custom cut for the uh, for that particular room. And if right. you've ever watched me measure something and cut it, you know, maybe I'm not the one to be building those, but 
<laughs> it's. I, I thought that was 21 inches. It's, Why is it 23? Carpentry is, uh, you know, yeah, it's a lot of work. I don't Maybe. like making that stuff more than I have to either. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just made a clock out of a Zenith cl- uh, a radio face, and I, I built a, a wooden frame with it and, and, did, and did it all by hand. You do it by hand, it looks like crap. So... <laughs> <laughs> until you're really, really skilled at it. Like but that anyway, door machine. Not well, you, by you, hand. That you do it by precision. It's perfect. You know, what, what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. That's right. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not perfect. But if you can get it, you know, fitting inside and not necessarily really tightly so you can get it so it moves up and down, you know, it cuts off the angle of your voice and doesn't let it reverberate up in the... Uh, in the upper chamber of the closet. And uh, mm-hmm. so that's something you might want to consider when you're building your home studio. Or if you have no idea what you're doing, what you do is you go over to one of our websites, homevoiceoverstudio.com or over to georgethe.tech and tell them what you know you want to tell us what you want to do and we can help you out. But making one yourself is not that hard. I can build one with an electric staple gun in less than an hour which is actually mm-hmm. kind of cool considering the kind of space I have here to actually do that. Uh, <laughs> your thoughts, Mr. Woodham? No, I, I agree totally. I mean, a, a sound cloud, acoustic cloud, whatever you want to call it, it works so well. It does a very good job of dealing with a lot of issues in small spaces. It doesn't take up more wall space, so you can kind of use more wall space for other purposes. It can really... Um, really make a dramatic improvement with you know the hardest part really is just the physical hanging of it from the ceiling that is the hardest part of the install you know other than that absolutely worth the effort no no brainer yeah toggle bolts are fabulous yeah they use those ones that like you, you there's like a plastic thing you shove it in the hole and then it goes like dink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, holds it to the ceiling. Yeah, there are a are lot strong. of those in this studio, as George will attest to, uh, and they're all still holding. So that's even better. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if you put it up there with rings and the right type of rope, it can you can really make it very very precise to make it sound exactly the way we want it to sound. So that's that's a good thing to know, and that's why I figured I'd talk about my cloud theory. Love it. That I love that you could show us too. Yes. Show Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break here, and if you have a question, we would like to see your questions here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, because that's why we're here. I see there's a bunch of people watching. I know you have questions, even if it's about you know marriage difficulties or about, about your Plumbing. medical issues. Yeah, <laughs> As long as it relates to VoiceOver, put it in the chat room right now, and Jeff Holman will get that to us. In the meantime, we're going to take a break. And we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, so do not go away. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. Oh, hi. You know, if you live in a house and your VoiceOver studio is in that house, you don't want to disturb everybody else who's living in there. So what you need are good headphones that are made specifically for VoiceOver. And that's why we have Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0. What's so great about these? Well, one, they have a very flat response, so you only hear exactly what it is you sound like. Second, incredibly comfortable. Leather leather pads on the outside filled with memory foam, a really comfortable headband that really <laughs> it really works with your head. The most important thing, you can wear them for long periods of time. That's really important. Where do you get them? Only at voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Just go there, look at the headphones, and get them now. Tell them we sent you. Thanks, Harlan. All right. Well, it's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and Source Nexus 2.0, which was just released very recently. And it provides a different set of tools that you're not probably accustomed to from Source Elements. Now, the Nexus thing's been around for a while. It's a virtual sound router for your computer, works on Windows or Mac, and allows you to take any 
audio source or destination on your computer, whether it be a Chrome web browser, Zoom, Skype, whatever it is, you can assign them their own unique sets of audio drivers. And what that allows those things to do is to communicate with other applications in the computer. And Nexus is basically the traffic cop. It's the Nexus. It's the intersection of all those things. But it also creates a driver so that any one of those sound sources or destinations can show up and become a plug-in. The plug-in in your multi-track software, whether you're using Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper, whatever you use, Nuendo for your post-production, can now uh, allow those signals to stream in and out seamlessly. So if you're doing a Zoom or a Skype and you are producing and you need to get the talent in and the client listening in on their favorite Zoom platform, maybe they're using Google Meet or it's corporate and they have to use Teams from Microsoft, no worries, you have a way to get that audio in and out of the production smoothly to make everybody's uh, life easier and make it work the way it feels like when they're all in the studio with you, which seems to happen so much less often. So if you want to learn more about Nexus, and of course, if you want to get Source Connect because you're, you're starting to get the big job auditions coming in that say, must have Source Connect, head over to source-elements.com and get started and tell them we sent you. We appreciate it. We'll be right back with your questions. Send them in right after this. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor. Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks, and I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. All right, we're back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Again, if you have a tech question for us, mm-hmm. and it could be anything at all regarding your home voiceover studio, George and I will talk about it incessantly for hours on end. Uh, <laughs> anytime, I mean, we, we That's we why you better sh- ask some questions. Otherwise, we're going to just go off on oh, a new On tangent. and on and on and on and on. But, <laughs> but we've got a couple of questions that we're going to get to in a minute here. But by the way, Je- Jeff, hold, <laughs> Jeff, what were you so angry? I see you going, ah, what is good? Jeff Holden, everybody. I think he was talking to his agent. I think he was talking to his agent. <laughs> <laughs> we got to unmute you here. There you go. Oh, oh, everything's fine. I just, you know, it's just like George said, like, that's that's my moment for the show. And uh, <laughs> I get a phone call right then. It's like, I, it's just, you know. All that's right. What, All right. Somebody's had a do. case of the Mondays. Right. Anyway, if yes. you've got a question, this is where it's going before it comes here. So if it gets kind of weird before then, now you know why. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyway, we have a couple of questions here. And again, just throw it in the chat room. George and I will be happy to answer your questions on your home voiceover studio or technology. Uh, we'll start off with the question from Jeff. Since he's in there, he gets, he gets priority because he, that's right. He's typing. He says, he says, every time I hear artificially produced voices on YouTube videos, I think they sound like total crap. I won't use the word he used, uh, but where are these great AI voices I keep hearing about? The canned tomato sauce of voiceover. That's what I call it. Yeah. The reason uh, why you're hearing all these like lousy voice models on YouTube is they're mostly extremely cheap or free. Mm. They're built into the free freemium or free apps people are using. 
And uh, that's why I, I, I just thought, I mean, when you mentioned that question, the name, the, the idea of the canned tomato sauce <laughs> comes to mind. Because listen, if you were a chef at a restaurant and you made pasta and you literally opened a can of tomato sauce, you would not be a chef for very long, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those restaurants pride themselves on that sauce. They make the Sunday gravy, right? You make the best sauce you ever had. That's why you come back. For me, it's pizza, the best taste in sauce. Imagine, imagine if voice actors were to just be using an AI version of, their, of a voice, and that would be accepted as a great performance. Ain't going to happen. Yeah. Is it good enough for at home to feed the kids? Yeah, that's what the, that's, that's what the canned feed the tomato kids. sauce <laughs> is for. You, you, can it's of Chef Boyardee. And it'll get them to shut up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't dare share that with guests or, like with, with, or at a restaurant, right? So that's the way I kind of look at it. Like these are just the can canned tomato sauce voices that are cheap, free, built into the apps, you know, and you're hearing yeah. them way too, way too often now, right? Yeah. I mean, we had PJ Ocklinlon with us last week and we were talking about this. You know, I look at AI. And everybody's, oh, it's getting better. It's all this. It's all that. I got quoted in Wired magazine a couple of weeks ago That's about right. AI voices, and uh, which I was totally honored For to World be Voices, in. right? Yeah, uh, as president of World Voices. And they contacted me and said, do you have a comment? I'm like, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, to me, I am convinced. And they all tell me, oh, it's going to happen. And I'm like, yeah, I'll believe it when I hear it. That a computer cannot cry. A computer-generated voice cannot sigh. A computer-generated voice cannot laugh. Yeah, it can. You can program it to do those things. You can program it to do those things, but it'll do it over and over and over again. And every uh, time uh, I... Uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh. Or at the end of a sentence, you'll hear... <gasps> and then you'll hear the exact same breath throughout the entire thing. <gasps> You know, or if you're if you're watching something like Ancient <laughs> Aliens, which we've been sort of hooked on, but mm. you know it's an AI voice because ancient alien theorists, you know, suggest it's the same intonation constantly, and it is perfect every time. No variation. There's yeah. no variation. It actually gets kind of droney. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, but you know, they said you know the horseless carriage will never take off, but. <laughs> What did we know? Look, right. as technology changes, human beings do what human beings do. We adapt. Mm -hmm. And if you're a voice actor and you see a change in the industry like that, make the changes in your in your marketing to show people that you're a human being and that you can laugh and that you can sigh and you can cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, a computer can't do it. It cannot replace humans. Not yeah, totally. I mean, I I just saw an incredible musical musical artist last night, Pat Metheny. Mm -hmm. He's a renowned jazz guitar player, a, a legend. Yeah, his sound, his tone is unique. His style of playing is unique, and it crosses borders between classical and jazz. And it's just incredible. He's one of the most amazing guitar players alive, right? And on stage, he had at least nine different guitars. He had some of them covered in in a, in a black. Doovie teen, so you didn't see it till the last second. He'd pull it off and then play it. He had other, a whole, this huge, crazy automated instrument that he created a few years ago that he triggers from his guitar and it's playing Ooh. mallets and bells and drums. I mean, it is just a, an unbelievable thing. And the thing is, that is entertaining. It, right. It's real equipment making real sound in a real space by a human. By a human, yes, you could you could program all of that in a computer. You could sequence it, and you could walk on stage and hit a play button, right? In fact, I actually saw an artist a few six months ago, uh, where <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. The lead singer guy basically yells at the audience, and the musician has a laptop, and at the beginning of each song, he hits play, and then he dances around. <laughs> it was the weirdest freaking thing I've ever seen. Yes. It, it was called Sleaford Mods. Anyway, mm. my point I'm getting at. Hire the human. People still <laughs> are going to want to see humans, be human, do human things, share human experiences, listen to human voices. Yes, there's always going to be a place where AI voice comes in. And yes, it's going to get better. Just like synthesizers came and changed a lot of music. 
just like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that have been substituted in over the years, but it's not going to replace it. Um, I just, it's not going to. It's not going to. And I keep saying this, it's going to be more work to make the fake version sound real than it will be for a real person to provide the real voice. It's going to take, take more time, more programming. It's going to be more difficult. So, humans right. win. Absolutely. Humans yes. win. Humans win. Computers, <laughs> zero. All right. Uh, Justin Ramos asks a question. This is regarding, regarding the cloud thingies. You know, these guys up here. Mm. Any problem regarding earthquake safety? Nah, unless you're, you're living in a... The, I think... Earthquake wise, first off, if you're in Los Angeles, it's not a problem. Nothing breaks here. They're making everything out of wood. It just goes. Everything's designed uh, to handle that. But I guess don't just just don't <laughs> use good don't quality use a staple hooks, gun. good anchors. <laughs> you know the things are going to swing around on the ceiling, and that's probably fine. I don't know if I'd want to be underneath one in a major earthquake if they were swinging around over my head. I might consider leaving the room uh but you know, i don't think you're gonna have to, too much to worry about but interesting question yeah I, I wouldn't worry about it too much if you set it up right if you've got more a couple of anchors in there if the whole ceiling doesn't fall down it's not going to hurt you mm -hmm. plus it's made out of soft stuff except for the frame so if the frame doesn't hit you it's like getting hit on the head with a pillow <laughs> <laughs> if, as long as it's not the very edge of the frame right good. right right and on to a different subject from the same questioner with the same sort of question. Uh, Justin asks, speaking of clouds, uh, uh, cloud storage recommendation for backups of auditions, etc. What do you clever, think, George? Clever, clever. I'll just tell you what I use. Um, I use O Drive, which is a way to like synchronize and move files between your computer and different cloud storages. So it works with O Drive. It works with Google Drive. It works with Dropbox, and that's what I'm using it with is those two services. And it just makes it easier for me to have more than one Google Drive account synchronizing to my computer at the same time. So that's, that's what I use. Um, all of my work exists on Google Drive, right? So that is my file syncing, file sharing, cloud backup, all wrapped up into one bundle right it it's it's there if it's if it's in those folders it's a backed up it's in the cloud if i if i have to run out of my house with my laptop and my and my girlfriend and and my wallet i'll get all my work <laughs> back because i can download that again from the cloud so that works for me dan what do you do same you know i i use you know as much problem as google is getting themselves in uh, troubles google's getting themselves into in different places google <laughs> drive works great yeah you know it's uh you know you just set up your folders it's there it makes it easy to share them uh but i also use icloud which is why when i open my laptop in the house everything that was ever on my desktop suddenly appears on there i'm like I don't want that stuff. And you just start moving it around and stuff. But iCloud mm -hmm. is great for, you know, saving the stuff that is actually, you know, the downloads in your, in your computer and stuff like that. But for actually for transferring files, because you can make them huge, uh, G Drive works just great. And it's mm -hmm. not expensive to have a couple of terabytes of G Drive uh, and, and totally worth it if you're moving a lot of files. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. you don't really want to store them on your machine. Uh, yeah, don't think of a drive, a file just sitting on your computer as permanent. Exactly. <laughs> we like to say, if it doesn't exist in at least two places at once, consider that it doesn't exist at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Unless you put it on a CD-ROM. Right, right. If, if you happen to have a CD-ROM burner, which, you know, <laughs> if you have a 1911 or 2011 computer, you might actually I do have still one. use a time machine hard drive. So, I mean, just an external laptop sized hard drive uh, plugged into my computer to do another backup onto the physical disc um and i just i haven't had to restore from one of those in a very long time maybe i've been lucky um but uh haven't had to worry about that at all but so os's are just incredibly stable now you think they figured out how to make them now so they're yeah i mean they're stable i mean the physical memory chip that stores everything can fail um like when's, I, when's that gonna happen it's, it, that that happened in the early days of flash storage 10 plus years ago yeah it was more common it is very uncommon nowadays um you need an L emp electronic <laughs> or epm what is it electronic pulse Mel weapon or something yeah if somebody knock. drops a nuclear bomb over your house one yeah. 
your hard drive is the least of your That's concerns. <laughs> because <laughs> there ain't no coming back from a nuclear attack oh uh anyway uh yeah okay so we got another question you get it george from okay, dave from dave just upgraded a mid 2012 he just upgraded a About 10 time. year old <laughs> macbook pro just now um from stock uh from stock to two one terabyte solid state drives good move 16 gigabytes of memory, good, good move. Um, a new battery, with, and it's a 2.5 megahertz Core i5. It's not. It's like a mid-level MacBook Pro. Do uh, do you think this can be a decent backup laptop for the road? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it, the thing is, once it's a 2012 and or older, really, if it's a 2015 or older, you're going to start running into web browser compatibility problems. Certain things are just not going to work on that system. Um, browsers won't stay up to date any longer. There's going to be some issues, and it's not because of the hardware. It's because of Apple just rolling out new machines and sunsetting the old ones and stopping supporting the old ones with the newer OSs. And it kind of rolls, you know. It's like everyone, every, this time of year, when the new OS comes out, something just lost support. So I think maybe that was... High Sierra, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Mojave is kind of the end of the road, you know, in terms of getting support and staying supported and current. So, yes, it'll work. If you just need a computer to travel with and record, that's technically overkill with all those specs, but right. it'll work fine. Um, he says, can I get a second Twisted Wave license on it? Yes. When you own a Twisted Wave license, you can install it on as many computers as you want. Which is actually very different from a lot of other platforms. Yeah. Uh, Either know, have so one or two or five limit. I mean, maybe some of the five, five or something. Right, right. And it, it's great because then you've got it on one computer. It makes it easy to transfer to the other. And you're working in the, in the same environment. And yeah. Twist, Twisted Wave's great, great software. Um, yeah. So, And just for relative speed, he made a little observ observation. Um, even with all those upgrades, the much the, the faster storage, the more memory, it, it's still one sixth the speed of the M1 storage or performance. I don't know if he means the speed of storage or the speed of the computer, but um, yeah, the, the, the M1s are dramatically faster, no doubt about it. Yeah. The storage on the silicon chips, because everything's unified into one small chip, the storage is lightning fast, which. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what makes a computer from a day-to-day -day use case. Just opening apps, loading files, saving things, you know, exporting this, da da da. That's the speed of that storage. Is it really is what you're gonna notice? That is what makes the computer feel extremely snappy. That's what keeps you from seeing the spinning pinwheel all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're really gonna notice more than anything, I think. So um yeah, you're it's it's a good experience for most people and um, you know it keep an old machine around as a backup i i do the same i just believe it or not i took my old backup computer that i gave to my daughter she she she's like this thing stinks dad it's slow <laughs> so i gave her my 2019 macbook pro mm -hmm. which is a very base model right and i cleaned it and put her system on it she's fine she's happy as a camper I took her old MacBook Air 2015 and I wiped it and installed my user account on it. And it's fine. Like it, it, it still works fine. Um, yes, it's slow, but it will still do basic things. And if I need to run an Intel specific thing, like I have a Windows version on there, it runs, you know, Windows 32, uh, seven, what is it? Windows 7? Windows 7. Whatever. Oh my God, Windows 7. <laughs> it will actually run on that old Intel Mac and it won't run on my new one. So well, I still very, keep it around. Very cool. Use a Mac. I mean, a lot of people out there are, you know, like, oh, I'm a PC person. That's fabulous. If you're good at that, I'm going to get that Skeeter. I'm telling you, this guy. <laughs> Got hey, we, 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 we're, we support Windows over at George the Tech. We've got a few on our team who are very Windows centric. Yep. Even the ones that are the most experienced, still, we, we run into technical brick walls where it's like, I don't know why it's glitching. What, what's going on there? I'm, you know, it's like, it's just, at the end of the day, I've, I don't want to be the guy who says, why don't you try getting a Mac? Because people, 
people on Windows hate being told to try a Mac. It, they just, it just makes them crazy. And okay, whatever the reasons you might, maybe you have some political reason you don't like Apple. I don't know. But it's, uh, it just is proven to be a great, stable, easy to use, well supported platform for creating media, yeah, which exactly. is what we do. Which is what it's really designed for. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like PCs are great for doing spreadsheets and they're great for maybe doing some graphic work and stuff like Game. that. Yeah, and definitely for gaming. Do not yep. game on a Mac unless you know, you can. Uh, but for voiceover, nothing is simpler than a Mac. You don't want all these different variables in the operating system. And Macs just are really designed for creatives like us. And that's Antivirus why we... Antivirus scanners running all the time. I, absolutely. No, one, no <laughs> one's infected my computer. Now, of course, someone's going to attack it today. <laughs> But uh, that would no. end up the Monday night sleep, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, after the show, you can uh, hack my computer after the show. Please wait. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think I think that's it for most of the questions tonight. Uh, thanks for all of those. Again, if yeah, you want to, if you want to write to us and you've got a question, let me get the right banner up there so I can show you exactly what it is you're supposed to say. Write to you. Write to the guys at VOBS TV. How do you like that? If you write to that address and you have a question for us, any time of the week, you wake up in the middle of the night going, what about this interface I've got? <laughs> write to us at the guys at VOBS TV and we'll be happy to answer it on our next show. Your hand sounded like a suction cup on right. a glass wall. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do that again. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And uh, so... That's an important thing to uh, to know. If you've got a question, you can always ask one of us. Come you, ask. You, yes. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to kiss this, wrap this thing up. We should wrap it up into a nice tight little ball and get ro rolling here. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages to wrap things up and make it more important to you because we'll be talking about you. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. So do not go Catch away. Catch that skeeter. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, it's time for me to talk about a great product, a great website, and that is voiceactor.com. Yes, voiceactor.com, an affiliate of voiceactorwebsites.com. Now, what do they do over at voiceactor.com? They have templated websites. If you've tried to build your own website using Wix or you're trying to do things with HTML and WordPress or one of the, there's a lot to learn. We have taken that problem out of the equation because a templated website gives you all sorts of options, different designs, different ways to present your, your, your name, your demos, and your contact information, which is by far the most important stuff that you can have on your website. And you can change the background picture. You can change the colors. You can add anything you want, and it's all menu-driven, not code-driven. And what they've been able to do is the technology has been updated. So everything is just a menu, a drop down. Okay, use this color, use that. Is it simple? Yes. Do you need something complex to show that you're a great voice actor? What you want to show as a voice actor is what you sound like and how to contact you. And that's really the most important thing. Other people spend six months designing the perfect website. And in two years, it's out of date already. Uh, or it's 
too elaborate. You don't want people going in there and going all these different places. They want to see your name. They want to hear your demos. And they want to know how to contact you. That's what your website is for. So go over to voiceactor.com and get yourself a website really, really quick, like in 20 minutes. So go over to voiceactor.com right now. We are the World Voices Organization. Also Also known known as as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the chance to learn and and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We We speak speak for those who who speak speak for a living. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All righty. Uh, unmute. We're unmuted, aren't we? We're unmuted, and we're okay. mixed up. I'm mixing this back up again. There we go. No, okay. Is that the way you're going to be? No, we're going to switch it around again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Having fun with the switcher. Okay, let's go back to where we usually are. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Technology. It's you know it's fascinating trying to direct this and catch a mosquito at the same time. I must say. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching tonight. Uh, it's always fun doing this show, and and Mr. Whittem, it is always a pleasure doing it with you. Uh, thanks, it's fun. Next week, Jeff. Why can I never remember his last name? Howell. Jeff Howell will be our guest. <laughs> hey, I, t- hey, I d- don't don't laugh. I, I'm amazed I pulled that name out of my butt too. <laughs> I'm just as amazed as you are. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking the lion's mane. It actually is helping a little bit. I actually, actually have, okay, good to know. Well, lion's okay. mane coffee. It's this like, is a mushroom. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good kind of mushroom. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, like one of those things that will send you off to another planet. Hey, anyway, what's wrong with that? <laughs> That's true. Anyway, if you want to work with one of us, uh, we have to remind you once again that if you want to work with me, you just go on, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com dot com mm-hmm. and you know put put in your specimen in your in my specimen cup, and for twenty five dollars, I'll give your stuff a listen. Or you can go over to George the dot tech. All right. And you can head over to the, the slash VOBS landing page to be reminded what our coupon code is, which is VOBS Fan 10. All right. 10% off anything on the website. All right. Uh, let's see here. You're, are you still selling the studio bricks in the vocal booth? Oh, yeah. We do. St- we, we have a vocalbooth.com diamond, the, you know, the diamond shaped one for sale still here. In, uh, it actually belonged to Atlas Talent. Oh, it's out, out there. They don't need it anymore. They don't have actors come in. So they shoved get, it in your closet. I'd no, it's still <laughs> there. Thank goodness. It's still there. It's just over in Playa Vista near uh, Marina Del Rey. And um, you can come check it out. Yeah, email me at George at George the dot tech. And we also have two Studio Bricks booths for sale that uh, my friend, our friend, actually our producer, Sue, is helping us get sold and so again just email me if you're interested in finding out more about those studio bricks booths that are for sale there there's some pretty big ones Ooh, and those are the twice nice as ones. big as this one right oh wow <laughs> and and, yeah. and, and, and the, the, the small ones are nice too so anyway uh we need to thank our donors of the week and you can donate to our show by going to our page if you're already there it says vobs.tv right underneath all that stuff it says donate now mm-hmm. click on that and you can get a dollar a month be fabulous uh it all adds up it makes us sound like public radio but we're better than that we give you stuff you actually need and not anything spun a certain way except our way uh but we need to thank our donors of the week like greg cooper grace newton christopher epperson 
Robert Leadham, Steve Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Designs, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis, and, and Sandra Manwiller. Also, we need to thank our amazing sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VeroHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, and WorldVoices.org, WOVO, the <laughs> Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Yes, I am in charge of that right now for the next year or so. We're making lots of changes. It's going to be a great organization with some great benefits for people. So go over to world-voices.org and join up. Uh, we need to thank uh, Mr. Mr. Jeff Holman. Where's, where is the Jeff Holman? Uh, there it is. Yeah, Jeff Holman. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there he is, Jeff Holman. See, it's, it's like B.J. Lederman. They have to mention it every Saturday morning on, on National Public Radio, but... Uh, there he is. Check it out. There we go. He is in all sorts of stuff. He's but making hire him. him. Absolutely. Go to find him at imdb.me slash Jeff Holman. One Hi. L, one M, one N. Okay. okay. Very good. Uh, thanks for all your help in the chat room tonight. Sue Merlino, we thank you for just being Sue because she's got a real bad back problem and she could not help yeah. us out tonight. So I've been doing all the switching and doing the best I can. Good and job. of course... Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You know, voiceover is a very difficult entrepreneurial freelance business. You got so much you got to learn. One of the most important parts is do you sound good? But we found that if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO BS tech talk. Tech. Tech. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. All righty. Have a good week, everybody. We will see you next time here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Okay.